So hello everybody. In this video lecture, we will cover chapter 20, the lymphatic system. Uh, mostly we will talk about anatomy of lymphatic system over here. Without um, going into any physiology, because we have another chapter and another lecture that is um, immune system. This is where we will go more in physiology. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. So lymphatic system consists of three parts. Uh, lymphatic vessels, um, call them lymphatics, lymph, and lymph uh, nodes. Ooh, I don't know why lymph nodes, uh, it might be also like organs, lymphatic organs. That's what our textbook tell us, right? Lymph nodes um, are simplest lymphatic organ, but we have other lymphatic organs as well. So I would say here, a network of lymphatic vessels, lymph and lymphatic organs that include lymph nodes. So what are the functions of lymphatic system? Um, one function that me, I don't know if it's that well known to students or not, but it's to return interstitial fluid and leaked plasma proteins back to the blood. Right, so you know like blood capillaries, they are very permeable and they're permeable because their job is to allow exchange between your blood and your tissues. So stuff constantly leaking out um, from the um, capillaries, from blood capillaries. Um, right, so mostly um, it's kind of like plasma, right? A little amount of proteins never, uh, blood, red blood cells. So red blood cells should stay inside blood vessels, but plasma leaks out and some plasma returns back. But we do have extra fluid that can be accumulated in our tissues without lymphatic vessels. So lymphatic vessels, they just picked up all this extra leaked plasma and return it back to the blood. So it's actually our another circulatory system. Everybody knows cardiovascular system to be circulatory system. Lymphatic system is another circulatory system, but it's one way system. The lymph, uh, lymph uh, flow only from tissue to the, towards the heart. It doesn't flow in a, from the heart to the tissue. So it's one way system from tissue to the heart. And of course, different vessels, now lymphatic vessels and no pump because we do have a heart to pump blood, we don't have pump to pump lymph, right? Okay, so when this uh, tissue fluid or interstitial fluid enters lymphatics, we call it lymph. So lymph is leaked plasma, right? Um, that is inside lymphatic vessels. Of course, um, a lymph is not exactly the same as plasma because plasma has a um, higher concentration of plasma proteins. Those proteins, especially large proteins, should stay within blood vessels. Okay, but anyway, so the first function is to return interstitial fluid back to the blood and together with lymphoid organs and tissue provides a structural basis of the immune system. So the structural basis of the immune system is lymphatic system. Immune system is physiological system. So lymphatic vessels, I already told you it's one way system. Lymph flows towards the heart and lymphatic vessels include lymphatic capillaries, lymphatic collecting vessels, and lymphatic trunks and lymphatic ducts. So ducts are the uh, biggest uh, bigger in diameter, trunks are smaller, vessels are smaller, and capillaries are the smallest, uh, lymphatics. Um, okay, so lymphatic capillaries, they similar to blood capillaries, except they're very permeable because they take up cell debris, pathogen, cancerous cells, uh, endothelial cells that make up those capillaries overlap to form one-way mini valves. We don't have valves in the blood capillaries. And um, those capillaries, they are anchored 
uh, by collagen fragments, uh, preventing collapse of the capillary. So they anchor to the um, extracellular matrix. Right, so over here you can see lymphatics, how they have this uh, blunt end too, right? And here is mini valves, and even this filaments shown here that anchor it to connective tissue that is part of some extracellular matrix, right? <clears throat> so lymphatic capillaries absent uh, from uh, bones, teeth, bone marrow, and central nervous system, right? So you don't have capillaries, lymphatic capillaries in these organs. Everywhere else in your body, you do have lymphatic capillaries. You do have special lymphatic capillaries that present in your intestinal mucosa, and we call them lacteals. And lacteals absorb digested fat and deliver these fatty limbs, uh, lymph, lymph, uh, chyle to the blood. Right. So over here you can see uh, like a villus um, of the uh, small intestine. Um, so like um, chyme. So all your you know nutrients are here. Right. So here's the nutrients. And those nutrients absorbed into blood capillaries, right? And this blood then deliver it to your liver first and then to all your organs. But then we have fat, right? So here's a fat, maybe make them a little bit bigger, right? And this fat is absorbed by lacteals. So it goes to the lacteals and with the limb. So here you can see this little, right? So right there, uh, it delivered. Um, you know, to, um, to your blood. Okay. So those are special lymphatic capillaries. Now collecting vessels similar to veins, except they have thinner walls uh, with more internal valves. Uh, anastomosis very frequent. Collecting vessels in the skin travel with superficial veins and deep um, collecting vessels travel with arteries. Nutrients are supplied by branching vasa vasorum. So vasa vasorum are special capillaries that supply blood to the uh, bigger arteries. That's what vasa vasorum. And uh, so you like a big artery, it has its own blood supply. Can you believe it, right? <laughs> so it has its own blood supply that's called vasa vasorum. And the same vasa vasorum supply um, collecting ducts with oxygen because they, everything is made of cells. So everything need oxygen, nutrients, need to remove waste product. Right, so over here kind of you can see this picture how we uh, collect this lymph with uh, capillaries, lymphatic capillaries, then they fuse together forming collecting vessels and they go through these lymph nodes. Right, so here's the lymph node and then to the venous circulation. So they get bigger and bigger trunks and ducts. Now trunks formed by union of the largest collecting vessels. So similar to, uh, to blood vessels, right? How like smaller venules make uh, small veins and then the large veins. Um, so over here also larger, largest collecting vessels make trunks. So we have most of the trunks are paired. So we have two of them, right? And we have single intestinal trunk. So we have paired lumbar, paired bronchial mediastinal, paired subclavian, paired jugular, and a single into, uh, intestinal trunk. So over here, you guys can take a minute and uh, you know kind of see how you know we have all this uh, different trunks over here, right? So, so take a time just to look at this picture. It just shows you all these different trunks, right? Like here, jugular, right jugular trunk, right here, left jugular trunk, right? Here's our subclavian trunk, so on. Now, um, the biggest vessels are ducts. So lymph is delivered into one of two large ducts. So we have only two ducts. Right, we have right lymphatic duct and thoracic duct. So 
So right lymphatic duct drains the right upper arm and the right side of the head and the thorax, and thoracic duct, everything else. It arises from cisterna chile and drains the rest of the body. Each empties lymph into venous circulation, so lymph returns back to venous blood. Uh, and it's happened at the junction of the internal jugular and subclavian veins on a, it, its own side of the body. So subclavian and internal jugular veins. So let's look over here. So you can see that the uh, part of the body that, um, so lymph returns from this part of the body, right, from right side to the right lymphatic duct, and this is a very smaller area than the rest of your body. So, um, I, I'm, uh, so th this one, the one that is, okay, let me see. Um, so we have thoracic duct, thoracic duct, and um, so thoracic duct right here, so it begins with this cisterna chi, Kylie, right? And this one picks up a limb from everything that's shown here in yellow, right? Okay, so here's the duct, and here's where it brings a limb to the venous circulation, right? So here's thoracic duct drains into subclavian. So here, right in the junction of the subclavian and left internal jugular. Right, right, this in this area. And right lymphatic duct uh, drains lymph also in the junction over here of now right subclavian and right internal jugular. So, the, and then you know that from um, this venous blood returns back to the heart. So, this is how your lymphatic vessels pick up all this leaked plasma, right, from the tissues and return it back to the um, circulation, right? To the venous blood and to the heart and then, um, you know, again, through your whole body. Okay, now, um, so lymphatic system is another circulatory system, but it does not have any pump, right? So then, you know, what do we use to bring this lymph back to the heart and very often against the gravity, right? So if you look over here, so we're moving against the gravity all the way up. So we use um, pulsation of nearby arteries. So here you can see that green are uh, lymphatic vessels and here's the red arteries. So when arteries pulsate, pulsation that pumps um, lymph towards the heart. Also smooth muscles over here, oh, I'm sorry. This is skeletal muscles contract. So when skeletal muscles contract, they also pump lymph to the heart. And of course, we have a smooth muscle in the walls of the lymphatic, right? They also pump uh, blood. So even we don't have pump, we have a uh, pulsation of nearby arteries, we have smooth muscles, and we have skeletal muscles that contract and allow us to pump this lymph back to the heart. And that's that's enough for normal sufficient return. Okay, so that was about lymphatic. So different vessels that uh, start with a small one, right? And then they get bigger and bigger and bigger in a diameter, right? Uh, until uh, we have these two ducts, right? Um, so again, we have right lymphatic duct over here and we have thoracic duct. Okay, now lymphoid cells, um, lymphocytes, that's the name come from, lymphocytes, um, because they, like all blood cells, they originate in the bone marrow, and then um, they move to a different organs um, for their maturation, and we will discuss it more when we cover immune system. But uh, two major lymphocytes, T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes that we call T cells and B cells. And B cells um, protect your body against invaders that outside of your cells. And T cells, um, there is different type of T cells. 
but um, some of these uh, T cells or cytotoxic T cells, they protect your body for, against the invaders that are already infected your cells. So B, a T and B cells protect against antigens, um, and antigens are anything in the body that your body perceives as foreign. It can be bacteria, it can be virus, it can be some, um, you know, uh, protein that doesn't belong to your body, right? So that's what T and B cell does. They protect you against these antigens. So bacteria, the toxin, viruses, mismatch, RBCs, cancer cells. Now T cells, um, manage the immune response and attack and destroy foreign cells. And B cells uh, produce plasma cells. I don't know, they are differentiated into plasma cells and plasma cells secrete antibodies and antibodies help you also to fight these uh, invaders. Now, um, so those are lymphoid cells, right? Lymphoid cells that found in these uh, lymphoid organs. And the more, more important are B cells and T cells, but we do have other cells, and other cells include macrophages that phagocytize foreign substances and help activate T cells, dendritic cells, dendritic cells, they also phagocytic cells. Um, they capture antigen, deliver them to lymph node, right? So they both are phagocytic cells and reticular cells. And reticular cells produce stroma or the base of this lymphoid tissue. So they, uh, they secrete reticular fibers. So that's a protein, right? Reticular protein, reticular fibers, and it makes a stroma of lymphoid organs that support all of the other cells that we just discussed. Right, so this is how lymphoid tissue would look like. Remember when you study different type of tissue, you talk about connective tissue, right? How we, we can have loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue. Uh, and then loose connective tissue, areolar, adipose, and reticular, right? So that's pretty much, you know, similar to reticular tissue, loose connective tissue, because we do have these reticular cells that secrete reticular fibers. And this is our stroma. This is support for all other cells. So we have reticular cells. Now we have reticular fibers. And then we have B cells, T cells, macrophages, dendritic cells. Right now, medullary sinuses, it's shown here like, like it's some kind of cell. No, sinuses is just those spaces over here. So that's a sinus. OK, so now that's a lymphoid tissue. So lymphoid tissue that we just look at, that is made of reticular fibers and all these different cells that are macrophages, dendritic cells, uh, B cells, T cells. Now lymphoid tissue houses and provides proliferation sites for lymphocytes. Um, there is two main types of lymphoid tissue, diffuse lymphatic tissue and lymphatic follicles. Do not confuse these follicles with lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are organs, simple organs. Lymphatic follicles, it just tissue that is more dense, right? So this is just this type of tissue that is dense. So here you can see, here's lymphoid follicles, for example, so tonsil. Tonsil is organ, right? That's a lymphoid organ or organ of lymphatic system. And here you can see some diffuse lymphoid tissue and some more uh, dense that form these follicles. Now, Diffuse lymphatic tissue comprises scattered reticular tissue elements in every body organ. Large collection found in lamina propria of mucous membrane and lymphoid organs. Mucous membrane is the membrane that cover your digestive tract and your respiratory tract. So it has this layer called lamina propria and it has lots of this lymphoid tissue. In lymphoid organs such as that we looked over here, tonsils, for example, right? Or uh, even lymph nodes, right? So that's where you will find these diffuse lymphatic tissue. 
and follicles are solids for uh, spherical bodies of tightly packed reticular elements and cells, and they also found in those um, lymphoid uh, organs. Um, the follicles are germinal centers composed of dendritic and B cells and may form part of a larger lymphoid organs. All right, so the major kind of job or function of these follicles is to provide a proliferation site for B cells. Okay, so here are lymph nodes, right? Lymph nodes are organs. Follicles are just dense uh, lymphatic tissue. This is our first organ that we're discussing. Those are principal lymphoid organs of the body. They embedded in connective tissue in clusters along lymphatic vessels. Near the body, you have in your inguinal, axillary, cervical region. This is where you can even palpate your lymph nodes. Uh, as when you have infections, they might be uh, inflamed, so they increase in the size, right? So this is where they're very superficial, and, and this is where they can be palpated. Um, so you can see how uh, lymph flows through these lymph nodes, and this is where the body cleans the lymph. Because the lymph pick up all the debris, all the cancerous cells, you know, um, it might be even bacteria and viruses it can pick up all different stuff uh, from your tissue fluids, right? So now, remember, everything goes back to the venous circulation, back to your heart. Obviously, you don't want to pick up all this trash in parentheses, right? All these cancerous cells, all these, you know, uh, chemicals, bacterial toxins, and bacterial cells. You don't want to pick it up and bring it back to the heart. So that's why all these um, lymphatic vessels go through lymph nodes, and this is where your lymph is filtered and clean. So we want to make sure that only clean fluid returns back to our circulation. Okay, so that's where the function comes to, right? Function is to filter the lymph. So macrophages will destroy microorganisms and debris. And it also has immune, system, immune function. Um, inside the lymph node, lymphocytes are activated um, and, mount, uh, and mount an attack against antigens. So uh, we will discuss it more, but those B cells Right, they, uh, they will be inside the lymph nodes, and this is where they will be activated by antigen. So they, there is a special like selection uh, of some B cells that will be plasma cells, and they will produce antibodies. So, the, so this is where lymphocytes are activated inside lymph nodes, and this is where uh, lymph is filtered. Now, what is the structure? Bean shaped. It has external fibrous capsule. It has trabecula that uh, in, uh, extend inward the um, uh, node. And it has um, cortex and medulla. So let's kind of look over here at this diagram. So here's the lymph node. So what it has? First, it has afferent vessels shown here, like number one, right? So those are afferent vessels. And this is the lymph flows towards the node, right? And then efferent vessel. Efferent, the lymph, so lymph, our goal is to bring lymph over here, right? Clean it, um, kill all the bacteria. Plus, because if we already have bacteria in our body, activate B cells, activate T cells, right? And the lymph that um, coming out is now nice and clean. Now we have way more of efferent vessels and fewer efferent, right? This give us kind of time to clean the lymph. We do need blood supply. We do need blood supply, uh, first of all, to provide, um, because there is lots of cells here, to provide oxygen and nutrients to the cells, right? To re remove waste product. And we also need blood vessels because when we activate B cells, when we activate T cells, we want them to um, enter our bloodstream and, you know, pretty much flow through the whole body, right? So we do have blood supply to lymph nodes. 
Now we, uh, now we have a capsule. So here we have capsule. Under the capsule, you have sub uh, capsular space. Makes sense, right? Sub capsular space. And this area is called cortex, this, the whole area from here to here. And we kind of have the outer cortex and deep cortex. So here's the deep cortex. Now in outer cortex, we have those follicles, right? This follicle, this follicle, this follicle, and this is where B cells are. So this is where B cells divide, proliferation of B cells over here. Deep cortex uh, reach in T cells. We also have macrophages over here, right? Uh, dendritic cells, macrophages, B cells. Um, are, now we have T cells. And then those uh, B cells and T cells move inside the medulla. So here's the medulla, right? We have uh, medullary cords over here. And then they can move either in a lymph or in the blood vessels, right? Uh, B cells will differentiate into plasma cells in this medullary cord. Um, and what else? Um, uh, ah, and you see this, this is our trabeculae. So this kind of extension of the capsule that goes inside and divides, um, you know, lymph node into different sections. And by the way, here, um, here we can just look. If you look over here, this just explain you the flow of the lymph. All right, so let's look here. So first, afferent lymphatics, right? So here we have afferent lymphatics. Bring lymph to the where? Uh, bring lymph from peripheral tissue, right? So, so that makes sense, right? From peripheral tissue, lymph goes to this node. Um, and um, the afferent lymphatic penetrates the capsule of the lymph node on the opposite sides of the hilum. So here's the hilum over here where we have all this blood vessel entering and we have efferent lymphatics. So afferent on the opposite side. Now, in afferent vessels, they deliver lymph first to this capsule, right? So obviously lymph goes here and it goes to this, I'm sorry, not capsule, but sub-capsular space, sub-capsular space. And here, this is a meshwork of reticular fibers, macrophages, dendritic cells. So here's our uh, phagocytic cells, right? So everything that is like bad over here, let's eat it up, right? Macrophages, dendritic cells. Um, dendritic cells also involved in the immune response that we will talk about it next chapter. Now, now, uh, where this lymph is go, going to flow? It flow in this uh, cortex, outer cortex. Uh, and outer cortex contains these follicles, these B cells. And, um, right, so, so here's our B cells here. Um, now, um, then lymph flow through the uh, lymph um, sinuses to the deep cortex. So it's not shown over here, but somewhere over here, it would be deep cortex. And in deep cortex, we have predominantly T cells. Then in the medullary sinuses, so here in the medulla, medullary sinuses, and this is where B cells now um, proliferating, right, not proliferating, they, um, B cells uh, became a plasma cells differentiate into plasma cells. So over here, right? And then to the efferent uh, lymphatics, um, that's lymph, uh, leave the lymph node um, and carry it towards the venous circulation, right? So now you guys kind of can um, kind of go back over here and whatever I told you, it just, you can read it how lymph enters via efferent, right? Travels through this uh, subcapsular sinus, smallest sinuses, and finally towards the hilus. Um, I, and I told you that fewer efferent vessels, um, and that's why we have like a stagnate of the lymph. So it's, it, it, it stays inside the node for some time, and it's allowed time for lymphocytes and macrophages to carry on their function, right? To uh, destroy all this pathogen, it's allow activation of B cells, activation of T cells, so on. 
Next organ, spleen. Spleen is the largest lymphoid organ. It's served by a splenic artery and vein, which enters and exits spleen at the hilus, the same as in lymph nodes. Function um, of the spleen. Now, lymph node, remember, they filter lymph. Spleen actually clean your blood. Um, it, it, so it cleanses the blood of age cells and platelets and debris. But it's also a site of lymphocyte proliferation and immune uh, surveillance and response. So it has both function. It remove, it clean your blood from uh, pathogens and it, and it clean your blood from old uh, cells, red blood cells, old platelets or, and debris. So it has both immune response and just uh, kind of like cleaning job. So here, you know, just uh, you can see the spleen in, in its normal position. Now, spleen uh, stores breakdown products of RBCs for later reuse. It stores blood platelets. It's a site of fetal erythrocytes production. Right, so in the spleen, um, during fetal development, erythrocytes are produced in the spleen. Um, not after the birth, we don't have production of erythrocytes in spleen, we have it in bone marrow. It has capsule and trabeculae, the same if, as lymph nodes, right? We also said there is a fibrous capsule, there, there are trabeculae. Spleen contains lymphocyte macrophages, the same as lymph nodes, and it also contains erythrocytes. And lymph nodes do not contain erythrocytes. So um, spleen has two distinct areas, white pulp and red pulp. So in white pulp around the arteries, and mostly it has, um, it's white, right? So it mostly has lymphocytes, reticular fibers, and this part involved in immune function. Uh, red pulp in venous sinuses and splenic cords. I'll show you in a second. And because it's red pulp, it will be rich in the um, RBCs, old uh, worn out RBCs. This is where we have disposal of it. Also some bloodborne pathogens and also macrophages. Right, so if you have pathogens, we want a macrophages to destroy them. So the spleen also fights with pathogens. So here, if you see the structure of the spleen, so we have capsule, and we have this shown here in a white, uh, white color. Um, that's a white pulp. So you see it's around the arteries, and this is that is rich in lymphatic tissue. So it's reticular fibers right over here, and it gives this white, wider appearance. So uh, lymphocytes and reticular fibers. And uh, here's the red pulp, the red one, right around these sinuses. And um, splenic cords are, you know, this is just the tissue of the spleen over here. So this one is rich in the macrophages, um, uh, red blood cells that, that are old. And, you know, we, th this is where macrophages pretty much uh, breaks them down, those red blood cells. Okay, thymus. Um, thymus is located on the top of the heart. It's size with age. So when we get older, it, thymus gets smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Um, so in infants found in inferior neck, so just above the heart, so it's inferior neck, extends into mediastinum where it's partially overlies the heart. Oh, it's, yeah, so it's even go deeper, right? In the inferior neck. And then it's go up in the mediastinum. Uh, increases in size and uh, is most active during childhood. So when we young, it's getting bigger, right? And then it's uh, stop growing and gradually atrophies. Uh, so when we dissect, for example, when we dissect a cat or a mink, and sometimes when it's old cat, uh, we cannot even find the thymus because it's really atrophy. So like, where is that? Uh, it's not here. Um, so thymus also contains outer cortex and inner medulla. Um, it 
packed with uh, uh, macrophages, lymphocytes, and um, medulla contains uh, fewer lymphocytes, um, and um, it has cymic corpuscles that involved in the regulation of T cell development. So let's see over here. Mm, so here's the cymic uh, corpuscle, right? So here's medulla, cortex, and this is, by the way, you see that's the location of the thymus, so that's the heart. And this is the uh, thymus, right? This is mediastinum, this area. Um, so it has this cymic corpuscle, and this is where T cells uh, mature. Um, now, thymus is different from other lymphoid tissue in several important ways. First, it does not directly fight antigens. When we talk about lymph nodes, remember we have over there macrophages and um, you know, we have B cells, we have um, you know, plasma cells. Well, those plasma cells, they really kind of, they circulate through the, um, our circulatory system, but we have macrophages that directly fight antigens. When we talk about spleen, we have macrophages that directly fight antigens as well. Thymus does not fight uh, antigens. It strictly function in T lymphocyte maturation. So T uh, lymphocytes are formed in a bone marrow. Then they move to the thymus. That's where the name came from, T. And this is where they became mature, right? And then they move to the lymph nodes. And in lymph nodes, they became immunocompetent. So that's coming up. Uh, also, another difference for the thymus, it does not have this connective tissue capsule. It actually, um, um, over here, um, okay, in terms of, yeah, yeah, I, I'm sorry. No, it, okay, so, um, I don't know, does it have the capsule or not? This I need to double check. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, but uh, what is another difference is, because remember how we talk about um, lymphatic tissue and how lymphatic tissue made from reticular fibers and all those cells, B cells, T cells, let me show it to you. Uh, okay, so just to make sure we, with our tissue, oh, okay. So this, this picture, right? So that's our lymphatic tissue. So we have reticular fibers and all those cells here. In thymus, we have epithelial tissue. That's, that's, that's the difference, right? So, so stroma, okay, no, 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 over here, right? No, no, not here, oh, next one, right? So the stroma of the thymus, made of epithelial tissue, star-shaped epithelial tissue, not reticular fibers, right? And uh, those are thymocytes, those epithelial cells, they call thymocytes, and they provide environment for T cells become immunocompetent. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I'm not sure about this because they became immunocompetent in the lymph nodes, but they do have mature over here but still naive, right? But uh, don't worry about it right now. Don't worry about this. Just remember that thymus is different, right, from other uh, organs, lymphatic organs. First, it doesn't directly fight infection. Its function is T cells maturation, and the stroma is not made of these reticular fibers. It's made of epithelial cells. Now, tonsils. Um, tonsils are simplest lymphoid organs, and these <clears throat> tonsils, they do not have capsules for sure. Yes, they're not fully encapsulated, so they don't have capsule. So we have <clears throat> palatine tonsil, lingual tonsil, pharyngeal tonsils, and tubule tonsils. Um, so here on this diagram, you can see the, uh, here's the palatine, pharyngeal, tubule, lingual, right? So the palatine posterior and to the oral cavity, right on the both sides of the uh, palate. Lingual is at the base of the tongue. 
pharyngeal in the posterior wall of nasopharynx. This is the one that we call adenoids. And tubule tonsils surrounding the opening of auditory tubes in the um, right, so right in the in the pharynx. Right, so here again, you can see you know, this diagram of the tonsils. Uh, tonsils contains follicles with germinal center. They're not fully encapsulated. Um, now, epithelial tissue overlying uh, tonsils masses invades inside, forming creeps. And as in those creeps, trapped bacteria is destroyed. Right, so over here, you can see that the tonsil, I, and then we have this, um, area called uh, crypt, and this is where bacteria is trapped and destroyed. And we do have this germinal center, so then we have proliferation again of B cells here. Uh, pears patches um, and appendix. So pears patches are clusters of lymphoid follicles in the wall of a distal portion of the small intestine in ileum, right? And they are so similar patches found in the appendix as, as well. Uh, Pears patches and appendix destroy bacteria, preventing them from breaching the intestinal wall and generate memory lymphocytes. So we do have this um, aggregation of uh, lymphoid follicles in um, ileum, uh, the last part, distal part of the small intestine, and in appendix. Appendix Appendix, you know, um, sometimes I have question for students for the exam. Appendix is a part of what system? And everybody for some reason thinks that appendix is a part of digestive system. Appendix is not a part of digestive system, it's part of lymphoid system. All right, so here you can see these uh, Pierce patches over here in the intestinal wall. Now, what is malt? Malt is mucosa associated lymphatic tissue. And it includes pierced patches and it includes appendix and it includes tonsils that we already discussed, right? So this is the um, lymphatic tissue that associated with mucous membrane. And mucous membrane, if you guys remember, it covers open body cavities. So, and if, if we have open body cavity, then we have uh, great chances for bacteria and viruses enter those cavity, like oral cavity, nasal cavity, like your, all your uh, respiratory tract, digestive tract, um, uh, uh, like um, vagina, that's also covered by mucus. Um, Mm. So where we have this high possibility of a uh, microorganism to enter our body, right, we want to have our lymphatic tissue because what is the job of lymphatic tissue? Because it has all these macrophages, dendritic cells, B cells, T cells. That's what, you know, uh, supposed to destroy that invaders. Um, so that's, I uh, already said, it's include pierced patches, tonsils, appendix, um, and uh, digestive tract. And it also includes uh, your respiratory tract in the bron bronchi. Protects digestive and respiratory system from foreign matter. That's the last slide. Okay, so that's it for chapter 20, lymphatic system. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope it was helpful.